Hello everyone, I'm Sophie and I'm currently at Kachara Forest Retreat, Bentong, Malaysia. This is the book that I'll be sharing from, Be Greedy. A little guide to creating merit and living fearlessly. Fearless, fearlessly sorry. This is by my guru, His Eminence, the 25th, Sam Toko Rinpoche. I'll be reading chapter 1, page 17. And before that, I will go to the picture to share with you. There you go. This is a picture of Buddha Raja Yogini and Chitipati, Lord Doje Shukten. There's Manjushri as well. And the other one is uh, Raja Yogini as well. This is a very nice, old, simple altar. Okay, chapter 1, page 17. We should be greedy to collect as much merit as we can. However, can we also collect merit by doing non-dharma activities and charities without a dharmic motivation? Will simply doing charity to help others also help us to collect merit? That is chapter one. The title, We Are All Already Greedy. Since the question is Buddhist-based, we will take the Buddhist point of view. Yes, we should be as greedy as possible in collecting merit. We are greedy with everything else. Some of us are greedy for food. When we see a buffet, we jump on it and eat everything on it until it, finish. it is finished. Some of us are greedy for new clothes and branded goods. The moment a new luxury designer line is released, we rush to the mall and sleep outside overnight to be sure we can be the first person to run inside the store when the door opens in the morning. Some of us are greedy for cars. A new car comes out. We know and understand everything about the car. We do extensive research on the internet about the car. We look at car brochures, kiss the brochures, wear them on our heads, go to sleep with them. We just cannot get enough of the car. Some of us are greedy for beautiful men or women. The moment we see a beautiful woman or man go by, all our attention is directed to him or her. We are all greedy for something. This is fine. We are not bad people because we are greedy. It is because we are used to it. It is by habituation over a very long period of time. Now, you may think you are not greedy. You may be poor, live in a small house and drive a little beat-up car. When you see people who are successful, wealthy and have nice cars, you might be inclined to brush off their wealth by saying things like, they are greedy, I'm not like that, I'm simple. Being poor and not having many possessions does not necessarily mean you are simple, easy to please, not in want of much and not greedy. Living simply does not mean you are simple or good. It may just mean that you could not make or keep money. You would be just as greedy for it if you could get it. If I threw $1,000 at you, you will grab it just as quickly as that rich person would. If we gather a whole group of simple people in a room and I threw 10000 into the room, you can be sure that all these simple people will run forward and jump after the money. What you have externally does not determine whether you are simple or not. It is not about what you can or cannot get. It is about how your mind thinks. So you should be careful about saying whether you are greedy or not. I do not praise people who are poor or simple. And I do not praise people who are rich because samsara is two, -sided. It's two sides of the same coin and all humans are the same, black or white, tall or short, east or west, rich or poor, high or low, fat or skinny. We all want happiness, harmony and love. 
we exist in the same condition. We should not have any ego or pride in our position or station. We are all exactly the same. Page 20. We should also be greedy for merit. If we are going to be greedy, it should at least be for something really good. So, we should add one more to our list of greed, to be greedy for merit. Merit is a kind of very special fortune that is created when we engage in virtuous actions and have a sincere motivation for our actions. The single most important thing about merit is that it supports the growth of our spiritual practice. And for a successful spiritual practice, which eventually leads to the highest form of happiness, enlightenment. Everything else that we need or want will naturally come to us. We will have resources, friendship, skill, money, good health, security. The merit will support us having and keeping these things so we can use them to produce even more good results. The difference between merit and karma can be explained as follows. When you receive merit, it is like having money in a fixed deposit and you receive interest on the money every month because you do not touch the actual principal amount. When you use karma, it is like taking money directly from your bank account. There is no interest and you just withdraw from the principal amount until it is finished. In short, when you have the correct motivation for an action, you collect merit, like interest, which you live off in future lives. When you collect karma, you only live off the principle, and when that finishes, it is completely finished. Ultimately, merit brings happiness. It is the fuel and cause for happiness. If we lack merit, we may have the outer trappings or outer forms of happiness, but seem to live a wonderful life, but we will be empty on the inside. For example, you may have a lovely husband who takes care of you. If you do not have enough merit to support this relationship, you will have to put all your energy into maintaining that part of your life. Then, another part of your life will become empty. Disastrous all go down. According to the Buddha's teachings and scriptures, merits cannot be supplanted. Having external physical comforts are good, but having them is not an indication that you have a lot of merit, nor does it equate to peace, harmony, and happiness. So, in addition to putting efforts into worldly activities of making money, Maintaining your husband or and, sorry, maintaining your husband, maintaining our husband and wife and children, etc. You should also maintain your lifestyle by collecting merit because that is where the happiness really comes from. Lack of merits equal life is not perfect. Page twenty two. There are powerful rich people who use their money for drugs, alcohol, women, wine, gold, jewellery, silver, etc. These things are nice and the people who focus on these things are not bad. However, they are using up their positive karma. There are different types of karma. When you use up one set of karma for your lifestyle, something wrong will arise in another aspect of your life. For example, you may have a wonderful and harmonious family, but because your karma is used for that harmony, you may not be able to find wealth. You might encounter death or accidents in your life, or you might always have misunderstanding with people. The karma which is used to bring you harmony cannot be used for anything else. You may have a lot of money, power, and position, but you may not get along with your family and friends. Or perhaps you get along very well with your family and friends, but you are always misunderstood, whatever you do and wherever you go. Maybe you receive one good thing, but you lose another. 
Maybe you do not lose anything, but what you have is not secure. There is always someone trying to take it away or creating problems for you. This is all a sign that you are using up your merit for an one action or aspect of your life and not for any other action because you do not have enough merit to cover everything you wish to do. Then, one or two aspects of your life will become blank because of the lack of merits. Do not blame other people. The situation around you, your job or any external factors for why things are not going your way as you wish. The source of your problems comes from a lack of merits. You should contemplate whether the above applies to you. If it does not, sorry, if it does apply to you, do not put yourself down or think of yourself as a bad person. You should instead make a sincere wish to change and do something about it by collecting more merit. So that is the end of my sharing for today. And as Rinpoche said, there's a difference between karma and merit, where, whereby the merit is like the interest on your bank account where it just keeps collecting interest and you live off the interest. And karma is like your bank account where you keep withdrawing from your principal amount. And as you withdraw, it will just deplete until it becomes zero. So it's always best to collect merit where you can continue living off the interest. And also, um, when, you know, when you have karma, good karma that is, you know, you may have it in form of having good family. But then because you're using that karma for that, then you may not have enough karma to have the wealth or um, good position, you know, for because you just do not have that um, that karma because you, you are, you're using it for your you know having a good family, or even if you have a lot of calm a good karma to enjoy wealth, but then you may not have the karma or merit to enjoy being understood. You know, wherever, whatever situation that you are in, that people will just misunderstand you, even if you have good intention or not, you know. Then, you know, it's just because you do not have enough good merit. So, that is why always be greedy. And this, this is being greedy for merit. So that everything in your life is going well for you. And continue on with my next session to learn more. <laughs> so for this session, I will end this with a completion dedication in English. May the precious body-mind where it is not born arise and grow. May that bond have no decline, but increase forevermore. May the precious emptiness where it is not born arise and grow. May that bond have no decline, but increase forevermore. May the merit accumulated by myself and others beneficially serve all sentient beings and the Buddha Dharma, and especially may the essential teachings of the unerring Master Tsongkhapa become clear and enduring. In all my rebirths, may I not be parted from perfect gurus. Let me enjoy the abundance of the Dharma, perfecting the quality stages and paths. May I quickly attain the rank of Rajadhara Buddha. By this virtue, may I quickly realize Guru Buddhahood and transfer each sentient being into that enlightened state. May all conditive conditions arise and all obstacles be pacified in order to increase infinitely the doctrine of the spiritual king, Tsongkhapa. By the merits of the three times of myself and others, May the doctrine of Lama Tsongkhapa for blaze forever. At dawn or dusk, at night or midday, may the three jewels grant us their blessings. 
May they help us to achieve all realizations and sprinkle the paths of our lives with various signs of auspiciousness. May the holy teachers have long lives. May the enlightened activities be fully displayed in the ten directions. And may the brightness of the teachings of Lama Tsongkhapa continuously dissipate the veil of darkness covering the beings of the three times. In this holy land surrounded by snow mountains, you are the source of all benefit and happiness. May your lotus feet, O powerful Chenrenzik, Tenzin Gyatso, remain in this world until the end of existence. Thank you for sharing your time with me and find out what goes on in this book, Be Greedy. Learn more. Thank you again and see you.